itself. Yeah, old cobwebs on the corner of the door. Yeah, I don't think they used it, but at one time it was probably quite the place. Well, these are the stables of the Folger estate, mm -hmm. of Folger's Coffee, which was a yeah. San Francisco company. Yeah, he had a house here, and he was in, had a big place in San Francisco. This is kind of like the summer place, I guess. He had a oh. reservoir, which is still up the hill where you can hike up to. And, uh, the brochure up here tells more about it. Historic district. Nineteen oh five. Yep. Coffee magnet, coffee magnet, <laughs> James A. Folger. Carriage in there and a yeah. model horse. I don't have to look. I have to go in sometimes, but you have to get a reservation. Oh, that uh, horse puppet video that you sent was really interesting. I actually shared that with some people. I usually don't bother <laughs> doing anything with the stuff I get except looking at it. But yeah, nerds the old saddle room. Hello, horse. Two of them looking out. Prior to renovation. Yeah, this is prior to renovation. Huh. Still pretty fancy place. Yeah, there's the restroom over there. Look, very modern. Yeah, boy. This is some construction. Yeah, I don't see any in there anyway. It might be some. Quite a, quite a horse stable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The 
Uh, I think the uh, stone walls were even before Folger. Oh, I believe. No, I'm not sure about this. This is getting the Simon Jones ownership. And, uh, Seven horses on the outside here. Built by Chinese laborers that they hired to build the walls. Huh. They're all dry laid rubble stone without coping. Huh. The stones had to fit together perfectly to remain stable because they did not have any teeth. Due to the incredible craftsmanship that was used to build them, they were just very well preserved. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah, they just fit them all together and back them up. That's remarkable, but in Ireland there are whole buildings made that way, including the roof all the way to the top. No, no yeah, cement or any, that, you know. Yeah, amazing how they did things when they, you did what you had to do. Yeah. And then, of course, this building was number four, the blacksmith barn. Uh -huh. And uh, the upper barn was also built at the same same time as the main stable and carriage house. It was a one-story wood structure on concrete footings. It was probably used as a blacksmith barn because it originally had a hearth and chimney and was in an isolated location. <laughs> so that's what minimized fire danger. The <laughs> oh, huh. Now you think the boarding stable. Yeah, anybody can bring horses up here. Yeah, these are pretty horses. Oh, no, get excited! <laughs> pick me, pick me! <laughs> I want to get out of here. And there's one more. We can just go on down around. There's one more interesting uh, building. Actually, we drove right past it when we came in. It's a dairy building. Oh. This is a newer house, but beautiful view through this side road from the Folger Estate. Mm. Wow, this <laughs> sure is big. I get my living my uh, mobile home in their living room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise, it would have fallen down probably a long time. What is it? A spring house, or somebody living it at first, or no, no, it's the dairy. Oh, the dairy. Oh, well, it probably was a spring house then, because yeah, that's they call it the dairy house. Oh yeah, you can even walk in it from the other side. It was built in 1874, huh. and. Uh, they kept the, uh, and Simon Jones, yeah, Simon Jones, here's where I got it, who, who owned the property before the, per it was built in 1874 by Simon Jones, who owned the property before Folgers purchased it. Jones was an ex-senator from Texas who ran an export import business in San Francisco, and he developed the land agriculturally and planted many orchards and vineyards and raised livestock. Huh. The dairy house was built near the creek with thick stone walls, louvered fence, and few openings. It was used to keep perishable dairy products cool. Yeah. The building looks very much like it did when it was originally built. Can I believe that? Yeah, it's all mossy on this side. Huh? All mossy on this side. Yeah, and that's where it gets wet. And the creek, down by the creek, it was cool. Yeah, there's the creek. And water in it. Well, yeah, not much now. And 
Maybe a good place to find salamanders. <laughs> oh, could we, I'll tell you, where the, the reservoir is, they're all over. The really? Reservoir. Yeah, in it, you can see them in there. Huh. We see them on the trails quite often, too. At certain times of the year, they start migrating here. But, you know, you can take some little loops around here. Oh, yeah. And it'd only be a couple of miles, maybe, or whatever. So it's kind of nice. But it does go all the way to Skyline. It's a wow. boulevard up here. And that's the hike we usually do. We go up here, come around here, and then go up this side, and then come back. That's the Al Alamo Beat Trail, and then you come back the Skyline Trail to the what they call the crossroads, and then come down, you know. So you can kind of do a figure eight in here. Yeah. You know, you do duplicate part of the trail in the middle, but otherwise. Oh. Now, where's Hutterd on the map? Oh, Hutterd's okay. not on there. Oh, okay. Up this, up, up woods oh, up. Oh, okay. Go, and so it's up this way, oh, and wind yeah. around, and, huh. and then go up King's Mountain. And it's less than six miles, but I bet it feels like 100 because of all the heights and the... Uh, oh, yeah. You can mm. hike there. But uh, it would be a, probably, that's a good idea. Turn that back. Huh? Oh, I didn't see this before. Let's see. Uh, Maybe I'll take one of these off. Yeah, the map and preserving the heritage of the horse and things. I'll have to take one of these. Talk about guided tours. I was going to see if they had an area map that showed, you know, a little more of what they got. It just shows the park. Anyway, so it's a nice, nice area to hunt in.